Hello. Uh, welcome to the final, the final for, for, a, for a minute, Garden Tour Club video. Um, so for this one, we are going to do uh, these three beds here that have my tomato towers and my citrus. Now, in the first video, I already went over the citrus here. Okay. Shouldn't have, but I did. Okay. You already saw it. Um, I also showed you a giant poop baby has that has since in just the last what three days has made a chrysalis. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get started. Look at that little poop baby down there. It has since made its cocoon. There's the cocoon. This looks like a little dead branch or a piece of bird poop. There it is. Okay, I know it's fascinating. Fascinating. Pretty butterfly alert. That's gorgeous and amazing. Okay, gardens bring in the beauty. You see that butterfly? It makes a little scissor motion with its hind quarters so that if there is a predator around, it bites off the back end instead of its head in, at the front. The predator will bite the back and it can still escape. Nature is so creative. You so creative, nature. So in this bed here, my habaneros are looking a little yellow, so I will be fertilizing. This is my orange habanero. I've got four. There's a quarter of you cabbage that needs to be cut down. My Tunisian bakluti. Do you see how all of the peppers are turning yellow and the leaves are starting to fall off? They're turning all yellow and the leaves are falling off because I mistreat them. I let them have babies too young. I leave them in their cell trays too long. And then I plant them outside too early. And we've had some mornings in the upper, upper mid 40s. Okay. This is how I mistreat my peppers. So Tunisian bakluti. Then we have Megatron jalapeno got jalapenos on there. I shouldn't have let that happen. It happened. Next is my Pasilla Bajillo, my little shriveled raisin pepper. Yeah, looking sad. Oh, it's got a little pepper on it. I should probably take that off. My Ancho Poblanos. Ancho Poblano is supposed to be a big, beautiful plant. Look at that. That's got like four leaves on it. Ancho Poblanos. I'm going to fertilize today. My Tabasco is looking okay. I've got three Tabascos. And then I have that cabbage that I just can't seem to get rid of. But it looks like it's bolting, so I think I will this time. I think I will. I think I'll do it. All right, so here is my bolted one kilo slow bolt. Um, before I get to all the tomato names, I'm going to show you how beautiful my uh, magnolia tendril pea, uh, sweet peas. Uh, I think I'm saying that name wrong, but you know, it has all the, the tendrils. And most of the sweet peas are purple, although some of them are green. So we have purple, purple, and the flowers are beautiful too. The flowers are purple. Here, here's an example. See, some of them are green and some of them are purple. Okay. Um, I thought these would already be up and picked and done before it was tomato time because I think I planted them like in December or November. Anyway, they chose now all three towers covered in beautiful uh, magnolia uh, tendril peas that are delicious so delicious okay let's go to the tomatoes so this first tomato here is Kazula 156 I don't see any flowers yet next is Golden Heart of America looking a little sad I think once I take these peas down I'll probably harvest the peas and take them down this weekend once I take these sweet peas down they'll get more Sun and they will probably be less disease I can clear off some of those bottom leaves um, my R.S. Dipper's Delight Dwarf. You saw me plant that baby. It was a little bitty thing. Look at this Dipper's Delight Dwarf. It has grown and it's full of flowers. I'm excited for this one. That gorgeous. Very healthy. The other one, when I planted that day, was a lot smaller and stunted. And it's still a lot smaller than the other one. But it has also grown and gotten more robust. Beautiful flowers, too. Beautiful big flowers. Okay, so that's the two in the pots. Down here, I know I hate that the sun is like right in the way. Down here is another Bananas Noir from Mr. and Mrs. Tomato Head. And it's getting pretty tall compared to the other ones. It's a tall one. Next to that is my Jarson 18 slash 3, which is actually very good size already so pleased about that 
looks like I only did two tomatoes on each side of the towers whereas last year I think I had like 10 tomatoes per tower <laughs> it's really crazy that's why I didn't get anything okay but I didn't get anything I do have some self-seeded zinnias and marigolds and I did do a foxglove there I have uptown funk is that tomato plant there is that the only one yeah that's the only one on that side hmm, that's smart I've got my winter savory there and then I have a woolly cake tomato on the corner here this is where I have my sun gold last year and it's so woolly and frilly and soft you can just see the fur on it and it would probably be taller and bigger if I didn't have all these pea plants so that's my woolly cake we'll get that cleaned up and get it you know where it can breathe this beautiful flowering thing tell you I love these flowers so much this is a bolted radish bolted radish is so beautiful but it's also delicious okay when the flowers get pollinated they make these little pods see that pod that pod is so tasty that pod right there it tastes like a burst of crisp radish and it's delicious let your radish bolt and eat those suckers eat them in this pot here is another pawpaw that i'm not quite sure if it's dead yet i haven't done the scratch test that's one of my pawpaws that i grew from seed and i got those seeds from don ray b you are precious thank you so much all right tomatoes on this side oh just the one chef's choice black and there it is right there doing really well this is a good one i hear i got the seed from gary with Gary uh, with grow your own food oh yeah it's getting really tall there it is it's way up here okay yeah I got to take these peas down we're gonna harvest and take peas down next tower I've got some Napa rose blush oh and I have flowers I don't think anything else I've shown you has flowers yet but there's the Napa rose blush little cherry tomato and this next one is German red strawberry actually getting pretty tall and I do have flowers I might have a tomato yep that's a tomato in there exciting so exciting folks you're seeing it here first and then I think the last tomato on these towers here is just my Napa Chardonnay so I have the Napa Napa Rose over there and then this is just Napa Chardonnay and I have flowers and a little bitty tomato there it is cuteness all right so that's what's going on over there Oh, and I do have a, a Georgia collard that has not bolted yet, probably because it's getting a little more shade than the others. But look at all that poop. The worms. The worms have gotten to it. So we're just going to take all the brassicas out. We're just doing it. I'm done with it. Done with it. All right. So before we get to this tower here, let's do this little barrel pot. I had some beautiful Lola Rosa. That's that red lettuce. Lola Rosa. But look it is bolting it's bolting it is but because it's so pretty i'm gonna let it go to seed and i'm gonna try to save seed because it really was a beautiful lettuce taste was good but it was just beautiful now these plants here i grew them from seed okay now they're supposed to be the chinese forget-me-nots but look at that flower cluster it almost looks like a baby broccoli that flower cluster there looks like broccoli so these are supposed to be Chinese forget-me-nots. I've never grown forget-me-nots from seed and been very successful. So we'll see. Yeah, that's weird. I've got an American flag leek. I've got my Greek oregano, which is the stuff climbing all over the ground there, or all over the surface. I've got summer savory here that's gone to flower. I think it's done because it went to flower um let's see i've got oh yes golden hour micro tomato it's beautiful the plant the tomato plant died my micro dwarf golden hour died but it does have fruit on there and i've eaten a couple of them so they are beautiful they are beautiful golden beautiful and they do taste bad um i'm not quite sure how to explain how they taste it's almost like a no taste with a little bit of bitter i don't know i didn't like it and i have some uh some other onions what is this oh Tokyo long bunching onions okay so that's that container there 
now for this bed here so here we have um let's see i put some toothache plant in here we'll see if it makes it. it's looking really moldy uh, I put onions in here and the tag has long since been lost, but they're doing really well. They're starting to bulb up. I don't, I don't have very high hopes to get anything significant this year. I've got a foxglove right there. I've got what looks like a collard, but it could be a cabbage. Who knows? Who knows? Labeling was terrible. Oh, you know what? I think this was my Romanesco. Oh, I think it was my Romanesco. There it is. Okay. Well, it's not going to do anything. That sucks. Uh, remember the birdhouse gourd Bella was eating? Who's <laughs> the shells? Well, I threw the birdhouse gourd and the seeds in this bed, and every single darn last one of those seeds germinated. So we're going to have a bunch of birdhouse gourds. So that's fun. Now, this tall stuff growing. I'm so excited about it. So excited about it. This is um, my high scent sweet peas that I got from Botanical Interest. I've never grown sweet peas before, so I, could, I couldn't tell if this was the sweet pea or if this was the scarlet runner bean that I got from Rick. Well, the scarlet runner bean is down here. The high scent sweet pea just kind of sat and stared at me all winter. And then all of a sudden, a couple of weeks ago, man, it started to climb. It's approaching four feet tall. And if it is as highly scented as I'm hoping, and it gets as tall as I'm hoping, Oh, it's going to be amazing and beautiful, and I can't wait to show you. Like I said, have Rick's Runner Beans. I called them Rick's Runner Beans. I did those two for. And then my High Scent Sweet Pea. I don't remember what date I did those. I think it was in December, maybe. Um, and then I have a bunch of onions that I planted. Don't remember the names of any of them, and the tags have all faded. So, anyway, there's onions and weeds. And then there's a beautiful echinacea that I grew from seed. I put that there last year. It did come back was probably a bad place to put it but you know live and learn a couple of miscellaneous herbs that I planted I've got valerian um, medicinal valerian root and then my kitchen sage so that's what's in that grow bag and then we have my blood orange my blood orange flowered while it was on the back porch okay it flowered so hard it flowered real hard I think it's done but I have a bunch of baby blood oranges now I will have to thin these. Last year, I only got three. So hopefully I get more than three to maturity this year. Also, this blood orange has the most poop babies of all of my citrus. Okay. So I showed you the Persian lime there. I showed you behind the tripod is my improved Meyer lemon. This is my blood orange. And there are millions of poop babies. Not one. Well, I'm, I'm exaggerating like I usually do. So we have poop baby, giant poop baby, another poop baby, another poop baby, teeny tiny poop baby, even tinier poop baby, it's a crispy looking poop baby. And then a really moist and wet looking poop baby. Yeah. And they do eat your leaves. That's what they do. And yes, they will eat your leaves. And your tree will look a little weird and, you know, defoliated for a bit. Because this is a lot of poop babies to support on one tree. I get that. But those butterflies are beautiful. They're pollinators. And I let them feast. I let them feast. As long as I get some oranges, I let them feast. Look at all those oranges. I know I'm spending too much time on this, but I'm fascinated by the blood oranges. I think they're fascinating. And I can't wait to eat another one. Okay, guess what? That took longer than I thought it would. So we're going to have another video and that's going to be the circle bed because there's so much going on in that circle bed. It's beautiful and it's amazing, but I'm going to have to show it to you another uh, next video. Okay. Exciting. Exciting. It's the time of year for all these beautiful things. Okay. But before I can film this next one, I got to delete all this stuff. I got to, I got to get some videos off my phone. So 
I'm having so much fun. It's going to be a great season. It's going to be a great year. So excited about it. All right, guys. Well, signing off for this part. Is it five? Is it six? Part six? Anyway, thank you guys so much for, thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.